Rasvaherha is my Ganyangeha or Mohawk name, which means he builds a bridge. Waksenagede Waganyadan, which means I sit with the Turtle Clan in Gandege or Tainanega Mohawk territory. My father was Turtle Clan and my mother is of British descent. Almost all my ancestors were United Empire loyalists, including the Mohawks. I would like to talk about understanding different aspects of Indigenous reality. It's important to build on this understanding to increase support to Indigenous-led research in a way that is responsible, respectful, and safe for Indigenous peoples. Let's start with residential schools. I'm somewhere between one and two generations away from this trauma. Almost any First Nations, Métis, or Inuit person can talk to you about personal family connections to residential schools, and this is an important part of Indigenous reality. For example, my uncle, Reverend John Jeffries, was Swampy Cree from Ch Chaplo in the James Bay region. He was separated from his family when he was very young and sent away to residential school. He later served as an Anglican minister, and he wanted to talk about his experiences there, but the church didn't want him to. He felt very betrayed. He also said to me one time that until he met my aunt, he had no idea what family was really supposed to be like. We also need to consider the important symbols and treaties that have shaped our history and the way in which we sit in relationship with one another. This is an important part of our reality together. The Hiawatha Belt is our symbol of Confederacy as Haudenosaunee peoples. The peacemaker helped to create the Confederacy to bring the great law of peace and join together the five nations. This belt represents the different roles that those nations play including my nation, the Mohawk Nation. Another critical treaty is the Dish with One Spoon Treaty, which is between the Haudenosaunee and Anishabek peoples. In sharing the lands and resources, we are eating out of one bowl with one spoon. The treaty says you should only take what you need and not more, so that there will be some left for others. This is sharing in a good way. The arrival of Europeans created other agreements. The Gaswenta or two-row wampum belt shows the two parallel paths of the Haudenosaunee peoples and the Dutch. The paths support each other but do not interfere with each other so that they can move forward together and share the lands and resources in a good way. This treaty was extended to include Britain and hence Canada, and is still recognized today. The Royal Proclamation is the first document in which Europeans specifically recognized indigenous rights over the land. They can't just be taken away by settlers. As such, the Royal Proclamation is the basis for modern treaties. In my community, uh, was originally settled by followers of Captain John Desiranchu following the American Revolution. Desiranchu was adamant that we should return to the land of the peacemaker who was born on Eagle Hill near the Bay of Quinte. Despite agreements, by the 1850s, that land was reduced to a third. And now we only have about 20% of that original land. That is the story of almost every First Nations community across the country. So how do we do better? How do we move forward knowing that this is the history and pain of so many Indigenous nations? How do we have good relations knowing that? The two-row wampum belt may be symbolic, but it reminds us you must renew the relationship. You have to polish the chain because it gets tarnished. That's what happens to our treaties and our relationships. So we need to pay attention, regularly renew them, and discuss our expectations 
of each other. Thinking about research, this is an opportunity for the tri-councils to think about what actions they can take to polish the chain. Does it mean that we should be thinking about applying the two row teachings of the Casuenta? Perhaps we could have parallel systems for indigenous research, for indigenous researchers. What would that look like? And how would it operate? As a professor at Queen's University and proud member of the Haga or Mohawk Nation, I am committed to addressing these questions as part of the path forward for reconciliation. I hope that this brief video can help play a role in this dialogue and inspire others to engage in these important questions. Thank you, Nyao Goa.